Right, hello again. This time we're going to learn about tuples in OCaml. They're quite useful to use in OCaml, and this is why I thought let me introduce them now. Maybe I should have intru introduced them earlier. But uh, I think this is a good time to have an idea about what tuples are. We mentioned in the last videos that uh, whenever we use functions in OCaml, even if we declare a function with multiple variables, we list, we put them sort of one after another. But in reality, we have this concept of currying which is uh, transforming a, f a function that receives multiple variables into a series of, or a chain of functions each of which receives only one variable please go back to the last two or three videos if you don't uh, un understand what this means but instead of, uh, of passing multiple variables after one another in OCaml we can pass them as one variable or one structure rather and this structure is called a tuple uh, if you have a look here and I'm copying here and copying and pasting from that course I mentioned in my first video from the Cornell University uh, from Cornell University that a tuple or an n tuple a tuple i.e. of size n that, that means it has n values is an ordered sequence of n values written in parentheses and separated by commas so the, the syntax is like this we have parentheses and we have multiple expressions and they are separated by commas but if you notice here it's n tuple, i.e. it has n number of variables, i.e. n equals 3, that means it has 3 variables, and it's ordered. So whenever we declare a tuple and we use it, we must use it in the same order. What this means is, if we take this example here, this tuple here, it has the first value as 42 integer value, and then hello, string of uh, hello, and then um, true, which is boolean. Now this is a tree tuple, contains integer 42 as its first component, so whenever we use this somewhere we must know that for uh, uh, the first component of this tuple is integer, the second one is string hello, and the third is the boolean value of true, so it's, the third is actually boolean. The order is very important, please remember this and uh, as we said before, write it down if you're taking notes that the order is very important, we must use it in the same order. Now, n can be 0. What this means, it can be an empty tuple, which is this empty parameters, which is actually unit in OCaml. We mentioned that before. So in, in OCaml, even if we, even when it comes to functions, if the function doesn't return anything, it has maybe a side effect, it pr prints out something, then it actually has a value which is unit. Uh, I think I'm going to demonstrate that in uh, this video. So the, uh, those are tuples uh, briefly. You know they're like an array of elements, or sort of a, st a struct or a structure, and they have uh, that format. And why they're useful? They're useful because we can, as I said before, we can combine multiple variables and pass them and deal with them as if they were one variable. Enough talking. Let's have some code to understand. I'll see how this works. Let's go back to our beautiful top loop. If you remember the max function. Let's uh, declare it again. Let max, for example, a and b this time equals. If a is larger than b, then a else b. Yeah, maybe I'm maybe I should have said larger than uh, larger or equal, but it's not a problem. Yes. So the currying will happen here, and the same idea from the last couple of videos. Currying, remember, if you don't know it, then go, go back to the videos. But what I can do here is I can declare max again. Yes, and then pass a and b as a tuple. So that's one variable, one struct, or one sort of structure, which is a tuple containing these two values, or th these two variables. So I can say, again, the same body here, if a and b, if a is larger than b, then a otherwise it's b. And if I apply it, I can say max, for example, 4 and 5, and I get 5. I can say, for example, um, let's actually have something similar to this. So let's have a tuple which has int, string, and a boolean. So let's say let um, my fun, and then it takes, for example, a, which is an int, let's say i, just to remember it, and then s, and then b. So the first one is int, the second one is string, and the third one is binary and I can say for example if i is larger than 10 then for example print int and by the way this print int is a function from uh, the pervasive module pervasives module it's 
there by default we can use it to print out an integer print print i yes else um, if s is maybe a test then print string oh let's print s uh, else so this is an, an, a nested f just to demonstrate how, demonstrate how things work else uh, if b i.e. if b is true then print let's say string true and if you're not I'm sorry yes why is it complaining oh yeah I said dot not um, not comma in fact let me just copy and paste this yes that's a little typo let me paste this here so we can organize the function and it looks much better let's just be, have a bit of indentation so if i is larger than 10 then print int else if s is test then print string s else if b then print string oh, print string for example true and that's it so this is my function i'm dealing with a tuple of 3 and notice by the way that this function it doesn't do uh, i'm sorry it doesn't return a value it just prints out something it, so this function we say it has a side effect it doesn't return any value and the return value will be a uh, um, unit those two empty parentheses yes notice here that uh, uh, my fun it receives a tuple so the star there the star there stands for this comma here so it's telling me that this is actually a tuple and it returns a unit it doesn't do much it just prints out something so if I just apply it to a tuple let's say for example 44 uh, high and true what do I expect it prints out 44 let's debug it uh, if i is larger than 10 then print i so it prints i and then exits the else does not get executed which actually makes sense you can pass another value uh, some other values if you want but the, I just want to demonstrate to demonstrate how this works now if you notice here this type unit we may we said it's just unit it doesn't do it doesn't do much but if I have the if I want to call this function somewhere in the middle of my code and we mentioned before that everything is an expression of common even a function if we, even if it has a side effect it doesn't do much it returns a value and the value here is unit then I can say receive it in a variable actually let's let f equals yes and then apply the function or call the function and maybe use that somewhere in, in, in a code let's say for example in nothing and close yeah it's telling me here that the variable if is unused just a warning but it works so I can actually receive that unit in a variable and maybe use it I'm not using it in anything here really just that, that means that don't do anything as you, as you know by now but I just wanted to show you that how, this is how you can actually deal with that in fact there's a beautiful thing about this is that you can actually use an underscore to say you don't care about the return value so I'm not actually bothered about that return value and then use it in and do that calculation in your code as you can see here I'm sorry yeah so that means I don't actually care about that value don't don't save it in any variable just get rid of it basically yes now if we if we have a tuple for example that has three variables and please focus here what I can do is I can maybe um, try and um, sort of um, have a function yes that retrieves one of those values what do I mean by that let's say let's declare a function to retrieve the first the second and the third uh, variables in a tuple so let's say for example first of three tuple and the tuple looks like this looks like a b and c and what I can do is return a yeah so th this way I'm returning the first element 
likewise I can do a function for example to return the second so or the third maybe third of three tuple just a funny function name but you can have your own name if you want or maybe type it properly and then return C and what that does is it returns the C so if I want to the first I know this is actually anonymous I'm sorry it's actually polymorphic it returns the value as is doesn't do any operation in it if I do this on the first it return 44 and if I do it on the third or just to retrieve the third over the tuple it should return true you can ha likewise have it for two or four or five or any tuple uh, of your choice another thing that I wanted to mention here uh, if you're not this is my fun here if, I, if, if we apply it again yes um, what I can do here is I can actually s even save that tuple my tuple in a variable and then pass that variable just to show you how this works oh I'm sorry I didn't actually say equals let my tuple equals so now my tuple has this three tuple here and then I can pass it to where's my fun to my fun sorry I can pass it to my fun and then my tuple and what it'll do is it'll actually do the uh, apply the if statement and then my i is still is, is 44 so larger than 10 so it prints out prints out i and exits and it returns unit as we mentioned before so in OCaml by the way we don't have a function that doesn't re receive anything yes a function must receive something something at least a unit so for example uh, one of the functions from the module pervasive is uh, we we uh, come across we came across so far print int or print string and we have print end line if I remember or oh, I'm sorry print new line print new line yes so the func what it does here is actually prints a new line as you can see there's actually a new line here but it receives unit so that means it doesn't receive any value but in OCaml uh, we, ha we don't have any function that, that doesn't receive anything it receives a tuple uh, I hope you're enjoying these videos I hope you're finding them useful and I hope you, now you're getting the uh, sort of getting into the spirit of OCaml getting into the feeling of have like thinking in OCaml and trying to apply OCaml to different examples as we said before we come across these things we read a lot and then the best thing is to have some hands-on experience to actually start coding a bit by bit and don't worry about the mistakes about the warnings these are there to correct our code this is how beautiful OCaml is thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time